Praise the Lord, everyone. This is Brother Harlan Parrott coming to you again today in the name of Jesus Christ, our wonderful God and Savior. It is the 10th day of June, the year 2009. We're continuing this wonderful Bible study course, God's Plan for Mankind. We're in lesson number 41, the book or the revelation of Jesus Christ. The symbols of the vision interpreted, Revelation 1 verse 20. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. The word angel means messenger and has reference to the pastors of the seven churches. It is used of men in the following verses. Revelation 1 verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Revelation 1 verse 20. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks, the seven stars of the angels of the seven churches and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Revelation 2 verse 1, Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Revelation 2 verse 8, And unto the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things saith the first and the last, which was dead, and is alive. Revelation 2 verse 12, and to the angel of the church in Pergamos write, These things saith he which hath the sharp sword with two edges. Revelation 2 verse 18. And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira write, These things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. So we can see angels are just messengers. We see these references to angels all through the book of Revelation. Revelation 3 verse 1, 3 verse 7, 3 verse 14, 15 verse 1, 15 verse 6, 15 verse 8 through 16 verse 7, 17 verse 1, 21 verse 9, 21 verse 17, 22 verse 8 through 10. But they are simply messengers, whether they be angelic or pastors of churches or any other messenger that is sent by God. Literal stars are luminaries in the heavenlies to give light on the earth. In this respect, they are fitting symbols of men who are. So these candlesticks are not those of the earthly or heavenly tabernacles. Literal stars are luminaries in the heavens to give light on the earth. In this respect, they are fitting symbols of men who are ministers of the word of God. Philippians 2, verse 15. That ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as lights in the world. These candlesticks are not those of the earthly or heavenly tabernacles, but are symbols of the churches in a twofold aspect. First, to manifest Christ within. Secondly, to hold forth the word of life in this darkened world. Philippians 2, verse 16, Holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. The word candlestick means lampstands or portable lamps, and is used seven times in the book. It's used in Revelation 1, verse 12 and 13. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks, and in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one likened to the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girded about the paps with a golden girdle. As seen in verse 20 of chapter 1, and verse 1 of chapter 2, chapter 5, verse 1 through 14, chapter 18, verse 23, chapter 22, verse 5, which we will study later. Part 2, The Things Which Are. This is Revelation chapter 2, verse 1 through chapter 3, verse 22. Chapter 4, The Seven Churches. 
Revelation chapter 2, verse 1 through chapter 3, verse 22. The messages to the seven churches are given immediately after the vision of Christ in the midst of the churches. Chapters 2 and 3 contain only the things which are, in effect, the things concerning the church on earth and to its rapture. The threefold application of the letters. Number one, a local application to the churches in John's day. These seven epistles as a whole portray actual conditions in seven local churches in Asia. This is clear from the messages themselves as well as from the following scriptures. Revelation 1 verse 4. John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come and from the seven spirits which are before his throne. Revelation 1 verse 11. Saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou seest write in the book and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. Revelation 1 verse 20. The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. Number two. It has a prophetic application to the churches throughout this dispensation to the rapture, revealing the spiritual conditions of local churches and individuals in the churches. This point is clear from the fact that the book is a prophecy. Then, too, these letters are as applicable to the saved all through this age as are the other New Testament epistles and other scriptures. 2 Timothy 3, verse 16 and 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. They reveal the will of God in this age concerning the saved through the rapture. It seems clear that the things which are could not be contemporaneous with the things which shall be hereafter. Revelation 1 verse 19, Write the things which thou hast seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. Revelation 4 verse 1, After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. The one must be finished before the other begins. These letters do not permit solely a logical application any more than any other epistles which are addressed to local churches or peoples or individuals, as the case may be. The entire book is addressed to the seven churches, and if it were confined to them and had no part yet to be fulfilled, it would lose its peculiar character as a prophecy of things shortly to come to pass and be purely historical. Furthermore, the Lord does not speak to all the churches of Asia in John's time, but picks out seven of the many churches because local conditions in them are characteristic of the course of this age, and they are concrete examples to local churches throughout this dispensation. Again, if the letters were confined to the seven churches, there would be no mystery, Revelation 1 verse 20, and no need for a universal call to individuals to hear and to overcome throughout this age. Number three. It has an individual application, so that the individual may be warned by the failure revealed therein, and profiting by the warning may find encouragement from the promises to the overcomer. The dispensational application of these church letters, in effect, that they portray seven church periods or phases of church history, is really based upon human theory alone. 
There can be no scripture produced to prove this theory in any one aspect. Similarity to certain phases of church history proves nothing. One can even find similarities between the history of the church and Israel, and there is no end to the similarities that could be found in history between almost any two things one chooses to compare. Anything that is based upon human theory is not dependable and is misleading and unscriptural. If there was such an application of these letters, there would have been two or three passages to support each letter and its application to some definite period in history. Much confusion and many false teachings are based upon this method of interpretation. Some teachings are as follows, that we are in the Philadelphian or Laodicean periods, that the rapture of the church takes place in either one of these two periods, that the church age ends with Philadelphia, that Laodicea deals with things after the rapture, that the Ephesian period ended with the apostles, and many other theories are unscriptural. We still have the conditions of Ephesus, etc., in local churches today. These conditions existed in John's day, and they will continue to exist as long as the church is on earth. So seeing there are scriptures to prove a local, prophetic, and individual application and anything said about a dispensational application must rest upon human theory and cause numberless differences as to interpretation, it would be best to forget this application entirely. For the seven letters to the seven churches in Asia, Revelation chapter 2, verse 1 through chapter 3, verse 22, we end all in the book which concerns the churches on earth. From Revelation 4, verse 1 on, the revelation concerns things which will happen after the rapture of the church. Points of similarity in the letters. Number one, in nearly every passage there is a reference to one or more of the eight characteristics of Christ listed in chapter 3. Number two, the headings of all letters addressed to the various pastors correspond. Number three, Christ commends each church except the last for its works and other virtuous characteristics. Number four, Christ rebukes every church except the second and sixth. The first, third, fifth, and seventh churches are commanded to repent while the second, fourth, and sixth are not. The second and sixth have nothing of which to repent, having been purged by persecution. The fourth has sufficient evil of which to repent, but has become reprobate and past redemption. Number six, a warning of judgment is given to everyone except the second and sixth ones. Number seven, every church except the second and sixth is more corrupt than its predecessor. The last is the most corrupt of all without one single virtue to commend it. There are about ten points of commendation in favor of the first church and the same number of commendation against the last church. Number eight, there is a promise to the overcomer in each letter. Number nine, the same admonition is given to each church. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Number 10, in each letter John is told to write. This shows that he is being directed by Christ. When each letter is made complete, the next begins. This makes evident the consecutive order of the things of the book. When the last letter is completed, John is told to write the things which shall be hereafter. Thus we have a new order of things after the churches, which do not concern the church on earth, for it is in heaven during the fulfillment of Revelation chapter 4, verse 1, chapter 19, verse 10, and it will come back to earth with Jesus Christ at his second advent as pictured in Revelation 19, verse 11 through 21. We will not attempt to discuss each application nor go into all the details of the letters. The applications, of course, are clear in themselves as applying to anyone in any local church throughout this dispensation where these many conditions still exist.
To overcome them and to be rewarded is the message to the believer in any local church in this whole church age. All these conditions have existed more or less in local churches since that time and will always exist, so the duty of each person who reads these letters is clear so that comment on them is not necessary. This will save space for discussion on more important truths in the book. Number 1. The Church at Ephesus Revelation 2, verse 1 through 7 Under the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars, and hast borne, and hast patience, and for my name's sake has labored, and hast not fainted. Nevertheless I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. But this thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. The above promise to the overcomer shows that saints will eat when in a glorified state, as well as the following scriptures. Matthew 26, verse 29. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Luke 24, verse 29 through 30. But they constrained him, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And he went in to tarry with them, and it came to pass, as he set it meat with them, he took bread, and blessed it, and brake, and gave to them. Luke 24, verse 41 through 43. And while they yet believed not for joy, and wondered, he said unto them, Have ye here any meat? And they gave him a piece of a broiled fish and an honeycomb, and he took it and did eat before them. John 21, verse 5 through 14. Then Jesus saith unto them, Children, have ye any meat? They answered him, No. And he said unto them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and ye shall find. They cast, therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved saith unto Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he girt his fisher's coat unto him, for he was naked, and did cast himself into the sea. And the other disciples came in a little ship, for they were not far from land, but as it were two hundred cubits, dragging the net with fishes. As soon then as they were come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid there on in bread. Jesus saith unto them, Bring of the fish which ye have now caught. Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land full of great fishes, a hundred and fifty and three, and for all there were so many, yet was not the net broken. Jesus saith unto them, Come and dine, and none of the disciples durst ask him, Who art thou, knowing that it was the Lord? Jesus then cometh and taketh bread, and giveth them, and fish likewise. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after that he was risen from the dead. Revelation 2, verse 17. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. Revelation 19, verse 9. 
And he saith unto me, Right blessed are they which are called into the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These are the true sayings of God. Number two, the church at Smyrna. Revelation chapter 2, verse 8 through 11. And unto the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. For none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. The overcomer is promised that he will not be hurt by the lake of fire. Revelation 14, verse 9 through 11. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever. And they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast in his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Revelation 19 verse 20 tells about this lake of fire and second death. Revelation 20 verse 13 through 15. Revelation 21 verse 8. Number 3. The church at Pergamos. Revelation 2, verse 12 through 17. And to the angel of the church in Pergamos write, These things saith he which hath the sharp sword with two edges. I know thy works, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's seed is. And thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied my faith, even in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. Here the overcomer is promised the privilege of eating the hidden or concealed manna, which is real, and will be eaten as much as will be the tree of life. Matthew 13, verse 44. Again, the kingdom of heaven is likened to treasure hid in a field, the which when a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. John 12, verse 36. While ye have light, believe in the light, that ye may be the children of light. These things spake Jesus, and departed, and did hide himself from them. We see this same term, hiding things and being hid. 1 Timothy 5, verse 25, Hebrews 11, verse 23, Revelation 6, verse 15 and 16. He will also be given a white stone with a new name in it. The white stone was known to the ancient as a victory stone. All these things are literal and not spiritual, for we are now blessed with all spiritual blessings. Ephesians 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. These are things given as rewards and not as blessings. See manna in the following scriptures. Exodus 16, verse 14. And when the dew that lay was gone up, behold, upon the face of the wilderness there lay a small round thing, as small as the hoarfrost on the ground. Psalm 78, verse 24 and 25, And had rained down manna upon them to eat, and had given them of the corn of heaven. Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. 
the new name written, Isaiah 62, verse 2. And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness, and all kings thy glory, and thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Isaiah 65, verse 15. And ye shall leave your name for a curse upon my chosen, for the Lord God shall slay thee, and call his servants by another name. Acts 15, verse 17, That the residue of men might seek after the Lord, and all the Gentiles upon whom my name is called, saith the Lord who doeth all these things. Revelation 3, verse 12, Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. Number four, the church at Thyatira. Revelation 2, verse 18 through 29. And unto the angel of the church in Thyatira write, These things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and thy patience, and thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds." And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. But unto you, I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan, as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden but that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. And I will give him the morning star. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Here the overcomer is promised authority over the nations as is promised to Jesus Christ in Psalms chapter 2, verse 1 through 12. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath, and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill of Zion. I will declare the decree the Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Ask of me, and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance in the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron, thou shalt dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear, and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the sun, lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way, when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. Revelation 19, verse 15. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. This is also promised to the man-child, Revelation 12, verse 5. And she brought forth a man-child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. It's promised to the tribulation saints, Revelation 20, verse 4 through 6. And I saw thrones, and they set upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, 
Now they had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection on such. The second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. It's promised to all saints of all ages. Psalm 149, verse 6 through 9. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth, and a two-edged sword in their hand, to execute vengeance upon the heathen, and punishments upon the people, to bind their kings with chains, and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute upon them the judgment written, This honor have all his saints. Praise ye the Lord. Daniel chapter 7, verse 18. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. He is also to have the morning star. Revelation 22, verse 16. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. Number 5. The church at Sardis, Revelation chapter 3, verse 1 through 6. And unto the angel of the church in Sardis write, These things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works, that thou hast a name, that thou livest and art dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found thy works perfect before God. Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Thou hast a few names, even in Sardis, which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, and I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Here the overcomer is promised that he will be clothed in white raiment and have his name perpetually in the book of life and have it confessed before God and the angels. Number six, the church at Philadelphia. Revelation 3, verse 7 through 13. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write, These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength, and hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Here the overcomer is promised that he will be made a pillar having authority in the temple of God and having the above names written on him. Galatians 2 verse 9 And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship, that we should go into the heathen, and they into the circumcision. 1 Timothy 3 verse 15 But if I tarry long that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of truth. Revelation 10, verse 1. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head, and his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. This is all literal, as any other writing is literal. The Greek 
Grapho occurs 186 times in the New Testament and means to grave or to write and is always used of visible writing. It is never used of spiritual engraving of God's laws in the inward parts. Isaiah 62 verse 2 And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness and all kings thy glory and thou shalt be called by a new name which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Isaiah 65 verse 15 And ye shall leave your name for a curse unto my chosen for the Lord God shall slay thee and call his servants by another name. Revelation 13, verse 16, And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Revelation 14, verse 1, And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him an hundred, forty, and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. Revelation 14, verse 11, and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up for ever and ever, and they have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image, and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Revelation 19, verse 20. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. Revelation 20, verse 4, And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Revelation 22, verse 4, And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. Number 7. The church at Laodicea. And under the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and have sat down with my father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Here the overcomer is promised a throne. We will see this more detail, chapter 41, point number 4. We will stop here at this point. This is Brother Parrot. God bless you in Jesus' name.